Aha. Uh -huh. I think we're okay now. Let me just make sure that things seem to be happening on the tablet, and indeed they do seem to be. So thank you very much for your patience. Starting six minutes late, um, and if you're watching the recording, that won't mean anything to you anyway. Welcome to episode 250 of Love at First Sent with me, Persilaise. Coming to you just about live from YouTube. Six minutes ago, when I was about to start, I was uh, chuckling at the first comment um, that were... <laughs> was from Gavin. I think you jinxed everything. Uh, no, that is most certainly not what this video is going to be about today, Gavin, but if you want to take it that way, that's fine. Um, lots and lots of you have been saying hello to each other already. Uh, Johanna is in a windy Wrocław, so you, you've made the journey over. Stay safe um, and safe journey back if, in, if indeed you are coming back. Uh, lots of people saying hello, hello from Canada, says Mystery Forms here as well. Prof, uh, Professor Melvin is here, Mateusz is here, um, and gosh, already lots of comments. Um, Jonathan giving us an update on Atelier Cologne. A huge, huge, huge hello to all of you. Thank you very much for tuning in on this Sunday, wherever you may happen to be. And I should also just say, if, uh, if, if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing and please click on the little bell um, icon so that you get notifications of new videos and also do consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find information about all of that in the video description below. But welcome to this um, somewhat unexpected feature length video for today because I've got this I've got this sort of little target in my head where I think that every single month I should do at least one top 10 best of rundown video of some sort um, and I think I'm right in saying that we, we haven't had one in January so far and I thought well you know tomorrow is the last day of January so really need to get one out of the way uh, not not that not that I'm planning to do it in a, in a sort of perfunctory manner if you see what I mean. Still lots and lots of hellos coming through. Olfactive Stories is saying hello from France. Cutie Camille is in Minnesota too. Who else is in Minnesota? Oh, Kenyatta is saying good morning from Minnesota. Uh, Claire is saying hello from Manchester. Uh, good morning from LA. It does seem to be the case that more people tune in on a Sunday, which I, I, I suppose isn't surprising. I guess if, mo if people are going to have a day off, it usually will be a Sunday, apart from poor perfume geeks like us who who put together videos for you. Anyway, the top 10 for today, the top 10 for January, is to, to I'm still looking at this panty droppers thing. That is not <laughs> the tone we want to strike here. The top 10 for today is inspired by the fact that Valentine's Day is just a few days away, uh, hence the roses. Last year, I think we did a Valentine's Day video, which was my excuse to give you a rundown of the top 10 um, most romantic perfumes that I could think of at the time. Happy 250th episode, says Rachel. Yes, actually, 250. Gosh. Uh, anyway, let's not go down that rabbit hole. So I thought it would be it would be fun to do another Valentine's Day one, but the theme isn't just a kind of generic Valentine's Day theme. The theme for... <laughs> I'm still looking at this dropping of various undergarments commentary that seems to be going on. You're running the risk of getting yourselves blocked. Um, the, the theme is perfumes that, to me anyway, somehow conjure the sense of being swept away, swept far away, so scents that make me feel like I have been transported very, very far away from the here and now. Um, looking at the selection of the, the, the top 10 there, it would seem that my tastes in that area or my, my idea, my olfactory idea of being swept away has actually taken me in, in a kind of green direction although by no means exclusively so, and also by no means very stridently green. So as I'm looking at what I've got here, I think actually there's only one scent, maybe two, that could really count as out-and-out -out greens. But what they... Lost at Sea fragrances, says Yoshi. Now, that's... That, um, that would be a different... Yeah, that's an interesting one. I like that one. Ashfaq is saying, what's that Lego on display, Mr. P? I'm surprised more people haven't asked about that. This was a gift I was given um, a few years ago now by one of my nieces, and it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be me. 
<laughs> so she found this site that sort of you you give them a picture of somebody, you give them a photo of somebody, and they turn you into a Lego character. And that's supposed to be my little perfume bottle. And it it is actually let me see how close I can get so you can see. It is actually based on a on a particular photo of me. I I think it's great fun, and it's it's been it's been sitting here for a, for a good long while. Um, so there you go. That's that's Persele's. <laughs> <laughs> the Lego hair is bad. Well, so is mine, right? Um, but anyway, shall we predict what's on the list for today, says Natasha? Absolutely, try predicting. But um, what I would also like you to do is choose one, okay? Just one perfume. The first perfume that came to your mind as soon as I said perfumes that sweep you away, perfumes that take you away to whatever your idea of a faraway place may be, and then give me a, a, a brief story or a few lines about why you chose that. And as they're going through, if I see um, any that that look particularly evocative or particularly interesting, I will read them out. Um, a fact of story says, my, my kid is watching too, he wants to see your Lego. Ooh, maybe one day we'll do a video on the Lego collection, although <laughs> that's a whole other level of geekery. We'll, we'll, we'll save that one. I see lots of predictions coming through already. I see somebody mentioning Durissimo. I see somebody mentioning En Passant. Um, what I've tried to do is also spread the love a little bit, share the love a little bit, and talk about some sense that I haven't mentioned uh, for a while. Some of them have come up in top tens or on other videos, but, but you know, I sort of try to cast the net a little bit wider. Um, Woozy says, Sauvage EDT sends me to hell. Does that count? Yes, I suppose that technically it counts, and I'm sure lots and lots of bottles of Sauvage will be sold over the um, next couple of weeks in time for Valentine's Day, but we should start because we've, all, we've almost been rabbiting on for 10 minutes, and this video is not going to be longer than an hour. So, the first one, let's start, let's start, let's start, let's start. Let's start with a kind of obvious one. Let's start with one that actually name checks a destination in its in its name, uh, that comes from a range that is all about travel. So, let, let's start nice and easy and breezy with some citrus. This is from 1999. And it's a little travel spray bottle of Aqua di Parma's Arancia di Capri. Um, I have had the pleasure of going to Capri only once, and that was quite a few years ago. I would love to go back. I'd love to um, have a time to explore the Neapolitan coast um, a, 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 a bit more leisurely. It's not going to happen this year, maybe next year, who knows? Um, keep those comments coming, and I will I will look at them. And if I don't read them out now, I will certainly read them back to myself later um, when the video is over. Uh, this is from 1999, as I say, but I have not been able to find out who the perfumer was. Certainly the more recent entries in Aqua de Palma's Blue Mediterraneo range were done by Francois Demachy. Incidentally, as far as I have been able to find out, even though Damashi has left his post at Dior, it would seem that he is going to be carrying on, at least for the foreseeable future, um, at Aqua de Palma. But let's see. So this is meant to be the oranges of Capri, right? And ah, uh, or Capri Sun, as somebody, as Gavin has said, you're on a roll today, aren't you? Um, and Yura says, I've had a Capri Sun, does that count? If it was orange, yes, but not if it was anything else. Capri Sun is now making me think far too much of school days. I remember the excitement when Coca-Cola flavor Capri Sun was, was revealed. So, um, what's, what, what's, what's, what's interesting about this one, and yes, you know, off I go. In fact, the, I think the way to date, the way to date when I was, um, when I, when I, the one and only time I visited Capri was, was the year when Pope John Paul II died, because I remember that Madame Persilaise and I thought, well, this is, this is a bit of a sort of historic moment. How long would it take to get on the train and go up to Rome so that we could just join the crowds in the Vatican and, 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 you know, see what it was like and, and share in this moment with them. So that's when it was. And also, from the sacred to the to the to the profane, it was also the year when Madonna had done quite a stylish 
perhaps unusually for her, quite a stylish advertising campaign for Versace because she was all over the Versace shop. Posters of her were all over the Versace shop on Capri and indeed along the whole of that Neapolitan coast. So somebody please Google when John Paul II died and then we'll know that's the last time I was on Capri. Um, and Eura says, Mr. P, you look like the perfume Pope today. <laughs> You're not wrong. I cannot disagree. I did not know this was where the wardrobe was going to go, but there we are. Now, um, Mr. P has expensive taste. In what, Ashraq? Um, what's special about this orange, and I think what makes it one of the more... Um, 2005 says olfactive stories. Thank you very much. Really? <gasps> Wow, 17 years ago. And it was it would have been Easter because he, he he died around about Easter time, didn't he? <gasps> That's far too long. It's probably unrecognizable now. I need to go back. But anyway, see, I'm being swept away. This video is already working. The perfume's already working. I'm being swept away on this on these journeys. This is going to turn into one of those um ask me anything videos, isn't it? Um what's special about this one is how the perfumer has topped and tailed the oranges. So at the top, he, she has drawn out the, the, the coolness of the orange note, the acidity of the orange note, with a really, really nice dose of cardamom. We don't tend to think of this one as a cardamom scent, but I think if you if you do kind of think cardamom in your head, you go, oh yeah, of course, it, it has got that cardamominess in there. And then, maybe somewhat unexpectedly, but but quite cleverly, there's 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 a the, the, there's a sort of sweet caramelized not gourmand but but heading in that direction base to the orange which then of course brings out the orange's sweetness and that's what seems to um stretch out the whole orange and make it last and then it gives you that requisite feel of of decadence that the kind of feel that you would want to associate with capri just bathing in the sun not caring about the hours passing, ordering another cocktail, spending hours and hours and hours, um, or mocktail, spending hours and hours and hours reading your paperback. It's got that, it's got that ease, it's got that laziness, it's got that the the nonchalance that you get, you know, when you're when you're a few days into a really successful holiday and you have actually lost track of what day it is. And somebody's saying they often have Aqua de Palma at TK Maxx or TJ Maxx, do they? Not in the UK so much, do they? Or have I missed it? So there we go. I'm not intending to do a blotter update on these um, unless something particularly interesting comes up about them, but I shall label the blotters as we go. What have, what have people been saying? Um, what have people been saying about in terms of their stories? Where's the best place to look? Let me look here. Uh, uh, Joao says, Jardin sur le Nil takes me back to my first teenage years, living close to the river in a small Portuguese village. Wow, I love that one. Uh, Tomash says, today I was swept away by sniffing a sample of kerosene broken theories, as it opened with the smell of a burning bonfire, but ended in quite a disappointing way to me with a kind of krufka dry down. Now, for those not in the know, krufka just happens to be the best fudge in the world. It's Polish fudge. It's Polish vanilla fudge. Lots and lots of brands of it exist. Um, a krufka is short for uh, a, a, a calf, a, a, a little, little cow, a baby cow. I, I guess the, the reason why they're called krufkas is because of the connection with fudge and, and, and dairy. Um, I'm sorry that it ended on a krufka note for you. Um, and what else have people been saying? Oh, Cutie says, I chose Chanel number five because it takes me back in time, back in time to childhood and also back in time to decades past before I was born. <laughs> Ramsey strikes a different note by saying, the night takes me to a cow pasture, which doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing, right? Uh, and Natasha says, one perfume that swept me away recently was Ghost House by Anna Zorkina. Oh, I don't think I smelled that one. Okay, so we've done, we've done, we've done one. Let's move on. Um, okay, I'll, I'll going to a completely different island, an island that's much closer to home, and I have an ulterior motive in mentioning this one, okay? This is a bottle that I'm pretty sure I have never, ever dragged out uh, for these videos. Um, and as a lot of you will be aware of it, but some of you may well not be. This, you've got to tell me how many of you know this and how many of you have tried it. This is simply called lavender, 
and it's from the monks on Caldy Island. It, it is just called Island Lavender or Caldy Island Lavender. So how many of you out there know it? Um, there, the Like I said, there is an ulterior motive in mentioning this today. The ulterior motive is that apparently this is about to go out of production. Now, I have not verified this claim. I don't know. I don't know how true it is. I don't know whether it is true. Perhaps the best thing to do would be to contact the monks and say to them, hey, guys, are you still going to be making the, the lavender? But if you, uh, if you are a fan of this and if you like it and enjoy it and feel like you must always have some in your collection, now may be the time to buy a backup bottle. There you go. Gavin is aware of it. He's saying this is a Luca Turin recommend, but was changed after he gave it five stars. How old is your bottle? Uh, not sure. Uh, six, seven, eight-ish years, maybe something like that. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> Gavin saying it's a cassock dropper. Just keep it going. Very, very good. Um, this is quite simply one of the best single note lavender fragrances you could ever hope to find. Um, I don't know if this is, you know, if this is a vintage monk creation, Gavin, but 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 certainly it is it is great. As Taffy says, wonderful lavender. Thanks for the information. And again, swept away, never been to Caldy Island. Um having smelt this, I kind of feel that I that I that I don't even need to actually physically go there because I'm there already. Um, do you rate it better than Caron pour un homme, says Woozy. <sighs> See, that's a tough one. The, 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 this is purer, okay? So this is more of the sort of purist's lavender. Caron is beautiful. I don't think I would want to make a, a distinction between the two. The Caron uh, obviously places the lavender on that gorgeous, um, again, vanillic caramelized note. It's It's so distinguished. It's so, so urbane, so sophisticated. The Caldy Island is much more naturalistic. Um, it, it, it doesn't last anywhere near as long as the Caron, for instance. But just, just purely by virtue of the fact that it really, really doesn't try to mess around with the lavender at all, it lets you appreciate just how downright gorgeous and multifaceted and interesting and contradictory lavender is. There are so many facets to lavender. Um, I think it was one of the times when I was interviewing Thierry Vasso years ago. He said that he never understands why, um, no, not that he never understands, but he said that he he's intrigued by why lavender is never called a floral note, because, of course, the the, the, the bit that we get the, the, the oil from is the flower, the, 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 the lavender flowers. He said that he gets that, you know, one good reason why it's not a floral note is because it has got so many woody elements, and yet people don't talk a lot about its floral aspects. And it is a little bit maybe like Petit Gras. It is this endlessly fascinating um, intersection between sweet, gentle, delicate floral facets um, and harder, woodier elements, green elements. Um, lavender, uh, uh, lavandin is more floral to me, says Yura, and Woozy says, I'll assume it's better than music for a while. Um, I, I, need to, I need to go back to music for a while. There have been so many times when, in the last few weeks when people have been making comments about music for a while. I just need to go back to that scent to see what I think of it. But Caldy Island completely, completely successfully brushes you away, sweet, you know, picks you up, and then off you go, flying across some some tempestuous ocean. Maybe, maybe you can tell yourself that you're here, you know, you can hear the monks chanting in the background. It's really, really special, really, really special. And somehow authoritative and delicate at the same time. Um and 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 up until now anyway, also has been um so affordable, so cheap, considering considering what you get. I mean, I think I think a bottle, uh, a hundred mil bottle, was you know something in the region of twenty five pounds or something like that, which is a little bit ridiculous. Um, 
Rachel says Maurice Roussel's original formulation of 24 Faubourg takes me back to uh, college at uh, in Paris. Uh, Sydney Rockpool takes me back to childhood hot springs in the Ozark Mountains. Ah, I love that description. Thank you. Oh, and Katzi says, I've got one. Dior's Au Noir. I feel like it sends me off into a witch's cabin filled with herbs and mischief. These are fantastic descriptions. I, I, I might have to collate some of these. These are really good. Uh, Maudlin says, whenever I hear lavender perfume, I think of Yardley's. I remember back in the day really enjoying the Yardley's. I remember I remember my, my paternal grandmother, uh, so uh, Iranian grandmother, always, always, always having some um, Yardley's lavender talcum powder at home. And I was just um, all, you know, fascinated by smelling it. So we've done two and we've already been chattering for 20 minutes. So Purslays, you need to get a move on. Where shall we go next? Where shall we go? Where do we want to be swept away to? Okay, well, we we sort of started in Italy and we've been traveling west. So let's kind of keep going, I think, as far west as we are going to go, potentially. Let's do this. This is, this is, this is, this is, where is it on my list? This is from 2017, so not very, very old. And it's from Etali Rodorange. This was composed by Caroline Sabas, and it's you or someone like you. And I say that we're traveling west because this is, um, this was meant to have been inspired by California. Now, of course, this um, was a scent, many of you will know, that was created in collaboration with Chandler Burr, long time, long time champion um, of the Etali Vaudorange brand. And unless I'm mistaken, he wrote, a few years ago, he wrote a novel called You or Someone Like You, which I think may have been set in California. So then when when he and the people at Etali decided to get together and create a perfume, I suppose it's not surprising that he thought of taking the inspiration from his novel. Anyway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, this one, for some reason, didn't strike a chord with, with a lot of people when it came out. But I, I enjoyed it from day one. Um, I think because I just found it to be... <laughs> Time to mask up. I've just I've just seen your comment. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, Gavin says Chandler Burr likes a Japanese aesthetic, so that's about as east as you can get. Okay, interesting. But what was I saying? I like the fact that this was an intriguing take on trying to do something light and fresh and bracing. So. It, it didn't resort to citruses. Not that there's anything wrong with going to citruses, right? You know, if, if you do them well. But it decided to go down the minty grass route. And yet, it didn't play the Herba Fresca card um, in a very, very obvious way. And somewhere in, 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 in the sort of meeting point of the mint and the grass and the toothpaste and the musks and the sunshine, as somebody who's never been to California, as somebody who's never even been to the United States, um, I hope to remedy, to remedy that one day, I just thought, okay, yes, I could perhaps imagine um, that this is a successful representation of, of the light of California, that this is a very, very, very luminous scent. Um, and I think it's not surprising that its image is of, of an eye. Um, because and, and a wide open eye, because there is there is something eye opening about this scent. There is something of the, the sense of stepping right into uh, the sunshine and and giving yourself up to it. Yeah, I I, I think this one. If you haven't tried it, um, it, it is well worth checking out. Where did my pen go? Why am I using this pencil? So I am rushing ahead. Uh, Gavin says must be a gallivant on this list. Otherwise, they need to question their raison d'etre. Uh, well, I don't think whether they're on this list or not has anything will have any bearing on whether they need to question their raison d'etre. But but no, there isn't a gallivant on here. Um, I didn't I didn't necessarily want to go for literally being taken to places. Okay, so yes, I know that this one this one references Italy, but that's that's not why it's here. It is because in an olfactory sense, it it successfully sweeps me away. Uh, comments, <clears throat> FW says, hi from Germany. Original Paris from Yves Saint Laurent smells romantic and appropriate for Valentine's Day to me. 
Couldn't agree more. Uh, Tomas says, this et à libre reminds me of Garland's Herbe Fresca, but it is more herbaceous than minty to my nose. Okay. Uh, Cole says, Eloge du Traître may be one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Good one from et à libre. Always makes me think of a French village for some reason. God, try and try and reason. What is it? What is it about it that makes you think of a French village? Silence the Sea by Strange Love, says Grasse au Parfum, brings me back to swimming with the dolphins in the Red Sea in Egypt. Gosh. That's a beautiful image. And Ped, what's that say? Pedra Licamosa says, for Valentine's, I always try to wear something flirting between sensuality and mysteriousness. I've recently discovered Dies Aurore, a sweet gourmandish incense. Greetings from Belgium. Mmm. Yura, I'm seeing your comment. I am not going to read it out. We need to carry on. So now... Let's 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 do the greenier one. Let's do let's do a big brand. Let's do you know you, brands don't get much bigger than this. Let's go. Ba-da. Let's do Bel Respiro from Chanel, but in the interests of um, making sure that everything that I'm talking about today is actually still available. Although I'm kind of cheating with one that's coming up. We're doing the EDP, as you know. The original EDT of Bel Respiro, which was from 2007, composed by Jacques Polge, I still think is superior to the to the current EDP, which came out in 2016. But having said that, I do still think that the EDP is pretty marvelous. Uh, a lot of you will know that I'm a huge fan of Bel Respiro, um, and I think when I wrote about it in my book over here. I included it as one of my Chanel's in the book. I think the way that I described it was by talking about how it completely makes you stand, feel like you're standing on a, on a cliff edge with a really, really um, dramatic sea in front of you and a beautiful, well-kept, well-looked after garden behind you. Let's, let's, oh, It's it's so fascinatingly green, this one, you know. If, if you haven't smelt it, but you like green perfumes, then you have got such a treat in store. Um, Olfactive Story says, I have the current EDP, really great for spring. Yes, it, the EDP has a laundry musk aspect that takes away the magic, says Leah. Yeah, I'm, I don't disagree with you. I think what's happened with a lot of the uh, Chanel exclusives when they went from EDT to EDP is that they were made heavier in the base. And, and one of the things that was so magical about the EDT, thank goodness I've got a backup bottle of Bel Respiro EDT. One of the things that was so magical was that it didn't it didn't even try to last all that long. Although it's it's its long lastingness was perfectly fine, but it just completely carried you off. You know, it has such lift to it. So like, you know, the, the, it, the wind came rushing underneath you and just picked you up. And there was this, this weightlessness to that scent, which yes, Leah, I agree, is a little bit lost in this version, because I guess in order to take it into EDP territory, <clears throat> they didn't just uh, increase the concentration, but they also made the whole thing heavier, maybe by adding musks, maybe to make it longer lasting. But, 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 the chasing performance before all else, uh, says DJ, very likely. But that green, grassy, galbanomy facet is still more than intact and just that sense of traveling you know you smell this and you think yes i just i just want to go i want to get on a plane i want to get in my car i want to get on a train if you know whatever your prefer um preferred mode of travel is and just go 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 and just that very act of movement is I think what fills your lungs and fills your soul with fresh air. I mean, one of the best names ever for for this one, one of the most appropriate names for a scent. I think Bel Respiro. It's it's just it's just so fantastic. Um, what are people saying about it? Uh, Bel Respiro always takes me to a beautiful resort in Bali. Says James can't explain why. Uh, Space Out says Bel Respiro is the one I thought of blindly purchasing. It sounds too good and too right for me. The Chanel exclusives are expensive as blind purchases, but I'm going to have to leave that one up to you. Cutie says, never smelled the EDT, but I do agree with the laundry scent profile. 
yeah, there is a bit of that. And Denby is contributing with the suggestion of Udisvahan from Dior's, so evocative, always transporting me to the Selfridges perfume hall, suffocating fumes. Oh, okay. Fevered tourists, pushy sales associates. I did not see that comment going that way, but okay, never mind. You've, you've, you've had your comment, Radha. Um, Jamie says, cliffside facing the sea, are you thinking of the opening of Olivier's Rebecca? I haven't seen that version of Rebecca. Um, I saw the most recent one, which was, which was all right, but that's high on my list of movies to watch. Windswept, says Rachel. Absolutely. So Bell Respiro is number four. And let's quickly do a fifth one because we should have done five by now. We're at the half hour mark. Let's go to where should we go? Where should we go? Where should we go? Let's do this one. Because uh, again, regular viewers will know that I'm a fan of this, this perfume. This originally came out in 2003. Uh, but the bottle in which it was first released has been discontinued and it is now in a kind of generic bottle as part of this um, brand's range of classic scents. So this is Estee Lauder's Beyond Paradise. You will all know what the original bottle looked like. This was composed by Kelly Specker. This is what Beyond Paradise looks like now. Bit of a shame. I loved the bottle. This is another one of these scents um, that maybe it came out at the wrong time. Uh, maybe, maybe it was mismarketed. I have no idea, but I, 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 th I think I think it's one of the most beautiful florals. Um, certainly, one of the most beautiful beautiful florals of the twenty first century of the century. One of the best things that Lauder have ever done. One of the best things that Kelly Specker has ever done. Maybe I still have such a strong impression of going into the um the department store in Portsmouth in the UK that then became um it then became Debenhams didn't it but I think it was something else when when uh Beyond Paradise came out and smelling this for the first time and thinking this is it Madame Perselace has got to have it because I mean I, I'm I love I love luminous bright, bright, bright jasmine fragrances anyway. But this but this just kind of took things to a whole other level. And, and, you know, the fact, again, somebody had a, a, a stroke of genius, a moment of inspiration when they decided to call this beyond paradise, because it, 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 is, it is like it takes you somewhere beyond. And the fact that in the Luc Besson advert, which featured the Madonna song, um, in the Luc Besson advert, you had these kind of hypersaturated uh, colours and weird florals and strange imagery. Maybe actually that was a bit, little bit too much for people, but it but it was appropriate. You know, even the image of the model and the poster, she was there was something a little bit otherworldly about her, um, and and it also famously contains this accord that was meant to have been inspired by the um, Eden Project in the UK really really tremendous bouquet so yes you get jasmine in there but you also have hyacinth and honeysuckle and you have this sort of dewy watery note and you you are just taken somewhere else it's it's one of those rare instances of a perfume that manages to take you to a, a completely abstract place to a place that you hadn't imagined you hadn't pictured you hadn't thought of until you smelt the perfume um Wonder what people are saying about this one. I loved that one when I was growing up, says Leah. Uh, this perfume is the third Madonna reference, says Gavin. Didn't she advertise this? What's, what was the other one? Hang on. I know I mentioned her in relation to Versace. What was the other Madonna reference? Or have I completely forgotten something now? Anyway, somebody will remind me. Um, I thought of Estee Lauder's intuition, says Tomash, as you mentioned the year of the fragrance of your choice. Ah, oh, there you go. Um, and knowing by Estee Lauder takes me back to my childhood. Knowing is such a good scent as well. And shoulder pads, etc. cetera. Uh, Shimon says, yeah, the Photoshop. Do, do you mean the Photoshop of the advert? Maybe it was too much. Maybe it was just a bit too much for people. Maybe, maybe it was a step too beyond. Who knows? 
Uh, Layla says, um, hang, on, hang on, Layla says, I used to travel to Mali for work and where I stayed had a beautiful garden. At night, all I could smell was tuberose. Wow. So weirdly, every time I smell fracas, I'm immediately back in Bamako. Also, Leila goes on, boyfriend who isn't into perfume has fallen in love with L'Air du Désert Marocain from Andy Tower. It's the labdanum takes him back to climbing trips in Spain. Gosh, there you go. So, so both of you being swept away. Are you going to get him a bottle of L'Air for Valentine's Day? James says, Joy by Jean Patou. Oh, rest in peace, Joy. Takes me closest to heaven. Lush and beautiful, magical. Um, oh, swept away. That was, oh, that's not a conscious Madonna reference. Don't make me think of that terrible, terrible movie. Gosh, wasn't that film awful? I did have to watch it. I promise you that was not a conscious Madonna reference. And now I'm not going to be able to unthink that movie for the remaining 25 minutes. That was a terrible film, wasn't it? Oh, you've reminded me of it now. Didn't they end up on some island or something in that film? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. No, no. Now I'm... <laughs> How are you going to make me cross? Because that movie was just, that was beyond, beyond something, that movie. Uh, hang on, let me label this. So we've got Beyond Paradise here. Um, really, really, really special, really special. I'm wondering now whether this this version is different from from the original one. But thank goodness I have got a couple of bottles of the of the original, you know, the sort of rainbow teardrop bottle as well. So, um at the 36 minute mark, I should say that what you are doing right now, if indeed you are doing this, which you clearly are, because if you weren't, you wouldn't be hearing me saying these words. You are watching uh, episode 250 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and I am presenting my top 10 perfume recommendations for Valentine's Day 2022, with the overarching theme being perfumes to sweep you away, to sweep you, to sweep you far away to 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 some enticing far-flung destination. Natasha says her English accent, we are not going to be talking anymore about that movie. So we have got five to go. Let us okay, let's 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 go to India, but let's go to India as interpreted by by a, a very, very Western European brand and a very, very European perfumer. Um this is this is a brand that, as you know, I rate very highly, and a perfumer that I rate very highly. But then, so do many of you. He's considered to be one of the best perfumers we've ever had. Uh, Denby says, "Try incoming." No, 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 no. This is this is a Jardin uh, après la mousson from Hermès, composed by Jean Claude Elena. Um, and this came out in. I'm just looking at my list here, so I don't get it wrong. This came out in 2008. <clears throat> um, when I was trying to compare when I was comp putting together the list compiling the list for this um video trying not to overthink it because as you know I'm very very good at overthinking these things um Hermes came up a lot and and I think uh you know maybe because they make luggage but but or for whatever reason they maybe because they take inspiration from from a lot of different parts of the world quite often um there, there were a few Hermès scents that I could have uh, included here. I nearly included Ordinaire Cisse Bleu. Um, the, the gardens themselves are trips to various destinations around the world, but but not just in name. I think they do successfully do that, with the exception maybe of Jardin de Monsieur Lee, which I'm, I'm, you know that, that that's a, that's a kind of oddity. Um, but I decided to go for this one because because this is such a superb scent, but we don't talk about it enough. Um, I, I, I must, I must admit, I personally find uh, Après la Mousson difficult to wear, uh, but my admiration for it is 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 huge. Um, I don't know why I don't wear it more often. It's such an interesting piece of work. I have had the pleasure, and I'm not saying this cheekily because I think um, it, it was a pleasure. I've had the pleasure of um, being in India during the time of the monsoon. At least a couple of times, because of because of the day job, and because of the time of year uh, that I'm able to take, the, the you know that I have the most time off work, and I'm able to go off on a sort of far flung holiday. Whenever we go to India, um, it's the summer and it's the monsoon, and so the, the monsoon can't be avoided. So, having experienced the monsoon in India, I can't say that this perfume 
ever made me think of that. It, it's it's not particularly made me think of India, but that's fine because the 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 singularity of its vision and the clarity of its vision is enough to take me to the India as envisaged by Jean Claude Elena. And so, even though it's not India as I experienced it, I'm I'm willing to accept it as somebody else's interpretation of India because it's got that coriander note because it's got the pepper note because it's got the ginger note because it's got the the the, the cardamom note um and it feels it feels like a very 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 honest and respectful homage to india um uh, the other day on the blog on personalays.com i posted um a review of uh, the new one from byredo mumbai noise which i just thought was such a crass depressing piece of work and and also i was just so annoyed by the fact that they basically took this huge synthetic sandalwood and thought oh well, let's be cool and call it mumbai noise i i don't have a problem with brands from the west taking inspiration from the east and vice versa i think i think we should all be able to take inspiration from anything and we should be able to explore um intersections between different cultures and there's a way of doing that well and respectfully and there's a way of doing that um bullishly and and cynically um the 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 jean claude Elena's take on india or the monsoon or a garden after the monsoon i keep saying it's india because of course india's india is not the only place that experiences a monsoon although i think in this case it was supposed to be an indian garden um this is this just works and it's so unusual it's it, it's one of the most unique things I've ever smelled I think because of that we haven't mentioned tomato leaf have we because because it's got this strange greenness of the tomato leaf and the peppery bite of the ginger um and it's mineralic and it's fizzing and it is wet really really brilliant and it really does take you somewhere else uh, olfactive story says I love the whole jardin collection but our jardin sur le toit is really the one that takes me back to springtime in Paris when I used to work there and take my lunch break in the parks nearby. Well, there you go. So that one works for you. Um, Rachel says, what is the joyous Neela Vermeer take on Bombay the Mango one? That's Bombay Bling. They said that, that's the, yeah, that's in a completely different league compared to the Byredo. Cat C is coming back with another one. Uh, Etat Libre d'Orange's Rien Intense Incense. This might sound strange, but smelling that transports me to some sort of dark altar or temple where you're both in awe and very, very afraid. That's not strange at all. It's the incense that making you think that, isn't it? Uh, James says, Jean-Claude Elena, Elena successfully takes me to other uncommon sides of India with Après la Mousson, beautiful nonetheless. Um, and exactly, Linden says, love this one, especially the ginger lily note in it. I smelled the flower once in the south of China. Um, it was magical. Okay, so label this one and let us move on right we have got four really really good ones in store for you let's go so we had a french brand giving us a take on um india now let's do a french brand and a french perfumer giving us a take on france this is from 2018 and it's uh from l'artisan parfumeur and flippos you won't be able to see that there, but this is Monde de Narcisse. Very, very underrated piece of work, I think, and I, and it it should have um it should have been on more people's best of lists. And Flippo, in it's weird. I mean, she's not an underrated perfumer because actually, far from it, she's a very, very highly, highly respected perfumer and a great perfumer. Um, and yet, she should be more of a household name, I think. Her name should be up there with the likes of Mathilde Laurent and Christine Nagel, if we're talking about, you know, female perfumers. And I'm really, really pleased that um, Frederick Mal got her name uh, on one of his bottles with Synthetic Jungle last year. And Flippo is underrated because of her association with Invictus, says Woozy. No, I'm sure that's not the case. So Monde de Narcisse is meant to um, evoke the Auvergne region in France. Um, the, the, the great emptiness, I think they call it in France. And I have had, uh, again, the pleasure of going to the Auvergne uh, several times because 
we know somebody who has a house in the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle of nowhere, which if you're talking about the Auvergne is really, really saying something. And this scent takes me away to the interiority of that Auvergne um, setting. There's something very paradoxical about being in the Auvergne, even though you, you really are literally in the middle of nowhere, and you can go for miles and miles and miles without seeing a single house, without seeing a single other human being, and you have the most amazing clear skies because there's no pollution. What what that kind of makes you do, I suppose, perhaps perhaps not surprisingly, is go in um, on yourself and become quite introspective, and to do a lot of soul searching. And you also then huddle into the, the the landscapes. You know, it's a place where you light fires and you all huddle around the fire and you all, you know, exchange stories over dinner. It's that kind of a place, or at least in my experience, it's been that kind of a place. Um, and this. This somehow captures that. And maybe that's because Narcissus, as, as a material, captures that sense of the intimate and the expansive. It's a really, really fascinating floral note because it does have what we would stereotypically call floral facets, um, but it also has that kind of immortel, leathery feel to it, which in this case, does feel like you know you, you you've you've been out for a great big long walk in the beautiful fields and the mountains of the Auvergne, and then at the end of the day you go in and you sort of batten down the hatches and you draw the curtains to keep the the warmth in and you shut the door and you all pull around the fire and maybe somebody's smoking a cigarette and then you accuse them of being antisocial and it all turns ends up in an awful round. No, let, maybe that bit doesn't happen. You have a really really nice meal with a with a glass or two of wine, and you you just start having those sorts of conversations that you wish would never end. It, it's that kind of a sentence. So that's where that's where, that's where this one takes me to. Um, I'm trying to hunt down the older bottles of L'Artisan, says Ramsey, and they're not easy to find and are also not cheap. Yeah, well, this is, this is, this is what happens when things are in limited supply and they, they disappear. They become more and more expensive. So we've got three to go. Okay, let's go to, let's go to one of, the scent world's most beloved independent brands. Uh, this is from Francesca Bianchi and it's Etruscan Water, her Etruscan Water from 2019. You know, a lot of, you know, regular viewers will know that I love this one. This is an extra, by the way. I still think this is the best thing from her range. If you are not aware of her range, please, please, please do yourselves a favor and check it out. She was very gracious enough to uh, do an interview with me on this channel a little while ago. So seek out the interview. Um, oh. This is, this reminds me a lot of, and I've said this before, I think, it reminds me a lot of Estee Lauder's Azure, which I think is from the 60s. Azure is this really, really no-holds-barred, huge, confident, authoritative um, leather sheep. This Etruscan water does a similar sort of thing, but, and, and it's got a strong retro feel, but I guess what makes it head into modern territories like a lot of perfumes that have a retro feel but feel modern at the same time, is that it's got light shining through it. It's 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 more translucent, but I mean it, it's got it's got some guts. Um, I'm really, really, really crushed by the fact that Madame Persolet doesn't like me wearing this one. Isn't is, isn't that just like one of the worst things when a perfume that you love? isn't appreciated by the person with whom you spend more time than with anybody else because you think oh, well when am i going to chance going to get a chance to wear this um oh a, a gonzalo doesn't like it well there you go so maybe you're in the same camp with madame Persolais. um ramsey says etruscan water is the only francesca bianchi i bought and it is nowhere near as good as vintage azure oh okay fair enough uh, Jonathan says, I just picked up Sex in the Sea narrowly. I got three 8 mil decants with the deal. I do love Etruscan water very much. Jonathan says, Azure is on another planet. Um, Andy Goring says, I cannot wear geranium pour monsieur because my poor wife hates it. I see, maybe it's the minty note. It's, it's, it's so, so sad, isn't it? But this is, this is a really, really uncompromising, bold, brave, brash leather that does 
also successfully. I always think it was it the Francois Ozon movie. Was was it did he was he the one who did the film Swimming Pool with Charlotte Rampling? Um, it may not have been Ozon, but there was definitely a movie called Swimming Pool with Charlotte Rampling, and that movie really just captured the heat of being in a in a balmy baking summer destination so well, and that is the smell of Etruscan water. Um, ZF says, I've considered cancelling plans with someone who didn't like one of my favourite fragrances. <laughs> I don't blame you. So that's the that's the Francesca Bianchi and uh, two more to go. Now, the next one is the one where I'm cheating a little bit with the version that I'm presenting to you, but I really did want to present this version to you. So this scent absolutely still exists at the moment. It is still being sold. And even though it's a 70s scent, it's from 1972, so start thinking of some guesses. Even though it's from 1972, I think that its current version is in pretty good shape. I have a bottle of the current version and I, I, I enjoy wearing it, I love wearing it. But what I have got for you is, a, is an extrait of it that um, I was very, very fortunate enough to be able to acquire, actually, thanks to the help and the, and the generosity of, of, of one of you. Uh, there you go, Denby's got it. This is the ec an extrait, a vintage extrait of Diorella. Uh, Edmond Rudnitska's Diorella from 1972. Um, a lot of people consider this to be, and I think I'm with them in this camp, consider this to be a kind of perfected um, eau sauvage. Do you realize I'm going to spray some of this Durella on a blotter just for you? There are only eight mils in here, folks, okay? Um, this is so good. And this, this has got a completely transporting, um, magical, magical, magical quality to it. Ruzi says, is the modern bottle version good? Yeah, like I said, and I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Um, this, this is just magic. This is just magic. You know, when Rudnitska at his best... Oh, Ramsey's saying, I loved Urella. Don't spray it on the blotter. Too late. But it was just a tiny spray. I promise. I promise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some on my hands as well. <laughs> okay, in the back of my hand. Um... Just, just heaven, just absolutely heavenly. So there, there is a green aspect to it. There is a herbal aspect to it, you know, heavy on basil. There is a sort of peachy, apricot-y aspect to it. There is, of course, a huge jasmine citrus aspect to it, you know, hence the sort of link with Eau Sauvage. Um, and a fantastically mossy base. This is the one that sweeps me away, not just geographically, you know, to some, to some, ultra, ultra, ultra sophisticated corner of France. But I think it also transports me in time. And not to the 70s, but maybe to what I would imagine the 50s would have been like, you know? I'm I'm always very wary of looking at the past through rose-tinted glasses, uh, because I actually am quite happy to be living in a time where we have antibiotics and, and vaccines and, and modern technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when I allow myself to be a bit self-indulgent and think of, you know, all the, you know, the wonderful times. I, 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 I do kind of hanker after the, the supposed elegance of the 50s. You know, I, I know full well that there were many, many things about the 50s and the 40s that were very, very, very difficult to put up with. Um, but this is, this seems to sum up somehow that the best of that era, the, the politeness, the politeness, the refinement, um, it's just, and and then always, always that Rudnitska boiled fruit note. You know that you also get in Parfum de Thérèse that that we that that we have from Frederic Mal. Just just divine, absolutely divine, absolutely divine. The quintessence of sophistication. And for the final one, for the final in the top ten uh, best perfumes for Valentine's Day perfumes to sweep you away. We're going to go back even further in time. Um, uh, what are people saying, by the way, before I do the last one? Uh, the melon note is insane, says Ramsey. Thank you. Yes, 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 absolutely. You're right. Um, people are, oh no, you, you're still sort of trying to guess. So no, we're going back, we're going back many, many years in time to a perfume 
that is also still available and that I think in its current guise is also pretty good. If you can get the extra, do get the extra because it is definitely the best uh, version that is available. That I'm, but I'm not sharing the extra with you today. Number one, because I've, I've, I've done it here before, but also just to kind of prove the point that the, that the EDT is perfectly fine. And I say that, let me just make sure that it is ED EDT. I'm pretty sure it's EDT. Yes, there we go. So we're going all the way, no, just, I'm gonna just make doubly sure, yes it is. We're going, any guesses? Uh, Shalimar, correct brand, but not correct scent. So this is going back all the way to 1933. And I thought, well, we're talking about being swept away and carried off. So we are going on a flight. This is Vol de Nuit from uh, Jacques Garlin, 1933. Um, Après Londe, people mention, yeah, Woozy saying, as you know, Après Londe, I absolutely adore, but to me, that's more melancholy rather than being swept away. There you go, Prof Melvin gets it. So let's finish with this. Uh, the, the masterpiece, the masterpiece that is Vol de Nuit from Jacques Garlin. Yes, I know that, you know, people watching it who um, are, have an intimate knowledge of the vintage will be saying that, you know, the, you can't beat the vintage and I'm, and I'm sure you can't, but But the, this this version, the EDT, is really, really, really good. Um, do you think Vol de Nuit is unisex or more feminine than Leur Bleu? Interesting question. I mean, if we want to play that kind of gender stereotyping game, <clears throat> I would say that Vol de Nuit is the more unisex because of the green and the woods. So what are we getting here? So from Vol de Nuit, you get a huge, huge galbanum opening and a weird galbanum opening, so huge that actually it, it 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 kind of descends on you like a sort of galbanum blind spot. You, it's so massive that you almost don't see it until you kind of step back and you go, oh yes, you know what I'm smelling here is green. Um, again, a strong narcissus note, loads and loads of florals, lots of iris. Um, Mr. P, you need to do a 24 hour stream one day, says Ramsey. Why? Why do you want me for 24 hours? Um, what year is your bottle, says Rachel. I think this one's no more than a couple of years old, okay? So I deliberately wanted to go for one that is pretty new. Um, and it's, it's, I, th I think, I think even though we've been talking today in this video about being swept away and flying, and this is a perfume called Vol de Nuit, I think the actual emphasis of the scent is more on the nuit than it is on the night, uh, on the flight rather, because there is something about heading into a night about it. So you're not just traveling, you're not just moving, but you're also leaving the day behind and moving into more mysterious, more enigmatic territories. It is See, it's, I'm smelling it now. It's one of those perfumes where you always pick out something different. And perhaps because I've been smelling, you know, nine other scents, I'm inevitably picking something else out, but I'm picking out like a kind of hyacinth, honeysuckle, lily of the valley note here, something powdery. It's, it's obviously retro because it's from 1933, and yet it completely feels up to the minute modern as well. And... It somehow takes me to a place where I never want the journey to end. It it turns me into Jennifer Aniston in that Emirates advert where she's so enamored of being in business class on Emirates that she doesn't actually want the flight to end. So there we go. We have gone from, what, what did we start with? I forget what we started with. We've got from Italy to the Pope, to California, to Madonna's acting skills, to India, to Jennifer Aniston. Only, uh, it's only on Love at First Scent that we could possibly have a journey like that. Uh, final comment to Pedrali Camosa says, Vol de Nuit was a smacker for me when a Garlin sales assistant showed it to me. Have you tried the extra? If only if it was more, I have a bottle of the, I've, I've got the beautiful, you know, propeller bottle. It is, it is just something beyond description. Um, and Jennifer Aniston had a perfume called Jennifer Aniston. Right. Thank you very much for watching. 
Thank you very much for your patience at the start as well. Stay tuned to social media for details of more videos coming up. And if you are watching this as a recording, please, please, please do leave a comment about what your favorite top sweeping away perfume is because I always leave the com uh, read the comments. So until next time, be good and enjoy the rest of your weekend.